That, that's what the, we all are here in the present moment, and that's uh, what, what, where we like everybody to be when they're uh, looking at art or listening to music or thinking uh, about what's going on in the present moment. So welcome to Words Falling from the Sky in the present moment, the good news from Sedona. And, and we like to call it that because there's lots of good news in the world and good energy. And we want to make that uh, balance a little bit of the other stuff that we get palmated with continuously all the time. So we say words falling from the sky in the present moment in Sedona. The good news. We're all the adults. Uh, have degrees in telepathy. <laughs> and all their children are indigo. And every yard has a personal vortex of spiritual energy which they would like to share with you. Um, and we have to explain a little bit about uh, our organization here. Uh, we have a little secret organization, clandestine organization going that we've been invited to. It's called the SIA, and that's the Sedona Intelligence Agency. <laughs> it's very similar to the CIA and the NSA, except we only collect the good news. <laughs> and, uh, and we do have a covert program, though, which I always have to explain, because just like the NSA and the CIA, we collect uh, things from you. And, and I'll tell you how we do that. Uh, about in 2012, uh, we were sitting on our, on our little um, patio where we sit outside at night and sup and do things and watch the stars come up and the moon. And uh, we were talking about 2012, and of course, most people know 2012 was like this big spiritual. Uh, wave coming upon us that people were wondering what would happen. Well, uh, so we were wondering what would happen, uh, even though we saw it happening around us all the time. And we said, well, what's going to happen next? So we're sitting there, and all of a sudden we were looking at a Thunder Mountain, which we can see from our, our place there, and there was like a blue light pulsing behind it. It was lighting the sky with kind of a, this rhythmic energy of light. And we're like, oh my gosh, what is that? We better pay attention. And so we're paying attention, and around Blue Mountain came a blue sphere of light. And it came, and it was circling kind of in spiral motions, and it came and it went up the canyon, and it came around, and it came right there in front of us on our, on our porch. And we're looking at it, oh my gosh, this could be a UFO. Uh, something very exciting is happening here. And then while we're watching, it was about four feet around and pulsing, and we weren't afraid or anything, but we were astoundingly amazed. And we're watching it, and this energy beam came out of it, and on the ground there in front of us was a manif it manifested a box, and it was gift wrapped. I know it's hard to believe, <laughs> but, but on the box, on the gift wrap box, written in English, it said, open me, please. <laughs> Do not be afraid. And so we opened it up, and it, 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 simple instructions in English, it says like, okay, turn it on, that's all you have to do, and then later on, uh, you'll have to like access what we've recorded. And then we recorded what? They said, okay. And they were talking telepathically now, of course. They said, what this is, you turn this on every night, and it collects all the dreams that are happening in Sedona. And we run these dreams through a special program that filters them for, and we do this without your permission, just like the S. <laughs> NSA or the CIA. Uh, but we filled it out, and only the good dreams that are solutions to world problems and to problems that the world is afflicted with. And uh, there's some really great inspirational dreams. 
So what do we do with those? We send them out to all of our agents. Mm -hmm. It's a very big organization, the SIA is. Um, they are in all continents, all over the world, Antarctica, the North Pole, they're everywhere. And uh, they said, well, who are these agents? Said, well, they are the artists, the painters, the poets, the dancers, the musicians, and the architects, and the actors. Because they take these inspirational dreams and they create things with them, and they spread them out all over the world for everyone to share and to feel like they've come home to themselves. So uh, that's what we do in the SIA. So we'll move on to our disclosure <laughs> and, and get to uh, just a little bit more uh, information about what you see around you, the environment that you have here. And uh, our theme this month of March is the arousing energy of spring. Because we all feel it. We all feel the arousing energy of spring when it comes upon us. And, and we have a poem just a little bit later which we'll talk to you about that. But the other thing we all explain, I'd love to explain to you is about art, science, and nature because we feel that is sort of the, the, the three foots of wh what we stand upon is art, science, and nature. And uh, how does that work? How do we do that? Well, I'll explain to you very simply. I'm trying to reduce it down into words that are real easy and short to say. So we say art. What is art? Well, art is the first symbols that were scratched into the rocks or in, painted on the caves or drawn in the sand or imagined by the people whose consciousness had first opened up and awakened and they wanted to record their experiences to share with others in the future or to share with others who they were living with in the present. And so art became the, 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 the symbol uh, recording system of spiritual and real lifetime experiences through nature. And you go, well, where does science come in? I get asked this all the time, where does science come in? Uh, I said, well, calm down, it's okay. <laughs> if you go back to the original meaning of the first, one of the first words of science was, was Greek, and it was called phusis. And phusis meant to watch the way things grow in nature. And you will learn from that. So this is where science comes from originally they watched what was happening in nature and then what did they have to do oh they had to record it now how did they record it well they recorded it with the symbols that were created through art because that's where symbols were started with the art and those symbols became writing and language and that language and writing is what became the language of science so it's how we communicate today. And it's so beautiful and wonderful to see. And nature, of course, is the source. So you don't question what nature's doing. We wouldn't, none of us would be here without nature. So that's how art, science, and nature come together. And uh, the reason I'm so into it is because there's two schools of art, uh, basically two categories, the artists who paint it, what's outside, we call those the naturalist or the realist. And then there's the artist who paint the symbols. And they paint what's going on inside as it corresponds to their experiences on the outside. So there's a lot we can talk about like that, but we're going to move on to poetry. And some of it will relate to what we're talking about, I hope. Um, the first poem I have here is written by someone else. Uh, it's a good friend of mine who sent me a poem. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful man. He was an Olympic skier for a long time. And uh, the way this poem sort of came from a place is uh, there's places called duck clubs. And duck clubs are people who have vast amounts of financial resources and they buy large tracts of land where ducks would love to live. 
and they plant lots of food for the ducks, and the ducks turn it into a sanctuary until hunting season, where they've built these little, you know, but this is a tradition, long tradition in the world, men hunting fowl. So we say, well, it's not for me, it's probably not for a lot of you either. But it is this thing that goes on in our world today. So these guys had bought a lot of artwork from me. And uh, they asked me, in fact, I have one little tiny more story to tell about it before it gets too long. They asked me to paint a painting over their mantle in the duck club. So uh, I said, well, if I paint ducks, they're going to be drinking their scotches and bourbons and thinking about blowing those suckers away. <laughs> so what I did, I, kind of, I had artist license, so I, I pulled a little trick on them, and I painted the trumpeter swans, which are endangered species, and may never be thought about shooting. <laughs> anyway, it turned out really good, but this man is, is, is lovely, which you'll see from his poem, and he is one of the participants in the duck club. And that will make you understand the final part of the poem. I saw a falcon make a kill, watching from a duck blind, still. Over me she came, wearing camo, war paint on her cheeks, a paragon, climbing without effort, deceptively casual, yet closing on a flock of teal racing south through smudgy Skagit rain. The ducks, unaware they were exposed, fair game, unaware that she was lurking there, high above, but fixed within her deadly stare. She turned on edge, appeared to stop, and quiet as a leaf began to drop. Silent, soundless, stealthy, speeding, faster, faster, faster still. Her wings now tuck a blur, darkly smeared across the gray. Select one as she bore, unsheathed in her yellow talons just before, struck and it was done. Then glided to a beach along the bay, while the ducks continued on their way. And I wonder if she watches me hunting on her property. So thank you, Frank. Frank Bothwell, he's a lovely guy, a wonderful man. So uh, I have another one here after that. This, well, I'm going to read one. Well, this one is re written for the show here this month. It's called The Arousing Energies of Spring. Comets, earthquakes, asteroids, volcanoes, and eclipse all rode into one precious present moment we share now here together. This is the time of rebirth and renewal as the arousing energies of spring, the arousing energies of the stars, the arousing energies of the sun, and the arousing energies of the moon, along with the arousing energies of the earth, all awaken in their rhythmic dance. We too awaken and dance with you there in the heart of nature, in gratitude and respect. The arousing energy of spring. Okay. It's all right. now, now, I have one here that, that just I had to write. We all know what's going on in the world of politics. We wish shelter. So I had to write a poem and I didn't think about writing it. It just started, I got, God, I have to write something. This is like so crazy. So it's called Elections 2016. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts out with the, with the, with the with a refrain in the Yardbirds song. If any of you were old, listened to the Yardbirds back in the days before early rock and roll, 
So here it is. Elections 216. Backwards, forwards, over, under, upside down. <laughs> this election's got my electrons wildly spinning around. <laughs> Exciting the pyramid cells in my cortex. I'm moving into some kind of vortex. <laughs> Making choices ain't so great when you don't have a candidate. <laughs> now raising energy. Now we're raising hope. Now we're raising love and we're raising compassion and we're raising joy and we're raising peace. And now we're not raising fear. Now whatever happens, our hearts will know responsibility begins with each and every soul. And only there can harmony be found in every heart, in your heart. Embrace it and know it. It is your gyroscope of choice and inner peace. Allowing the wisdom of experience to grow, finding the oneness the electorate does not know. <laughs> it was kind of therapy. It was really therapy, I'll tell you. Yeah. I, I think we, I'm going to send it to the New Yorker magazine and say, publish this. Okay, we're moving on here into the... Well, this one here comes from our, our beautiful spring that we've had here. It's been overly, abundantly above normal temperature. Yeah. And all of our trees, the fruit trees are blossoming, the flowers, the wildflowers are blooming, the ones that don't bloom until April. Yeah. So it's exciting. Uh, we, we embrace the warmth because it's really lovely. I, I, I don't like the cold. So this one is uh, called Early Spring Winds. The sound of early spring winds singing in harmony with the life force, with the sun's gift, with the earth's gift, with the galactic gift, the universal gift. It is another sweet song. Young leaves like gemstones dance in the light. Their message of renewal and rebirth as ancient as creation itself. Dance with those leaves. Dance with the trees. Dance with the first flowers of spring. Remember and embrace in gratitude the sound of those warm winds of early spring as they dance through the juniper and pine. It's such a gift to have that weather. I mean, it is. It's, for me, it really is. Well, this one here gets a little more arcane. Um, Crystal, my wife Crystal there. This is my wife Crystal. She's very important to doing everything that nobody hardly ever sees. So we want to honor her too. Uh, I explained before about symbols and the symbolist idea and the naturalist idea. Well, um, since I'm a symbolist, I think about talking in the language of the symbols. So this poem is called The Language of the Symbols. It's very, from the beginning of art till right now, we, we, you could see art, all art is symbols if you wish. But some is designated to have symbols in it because the artists have an intention of passing on something that uh, we can absorb and know as part of ourselves and identify. Because uh, we all need to identify with symbols that are important to our deep inner self. So, language of the symbols. 
listening to the oracle's message, strange sounds of multi-dimensional spinning symbols, symmetrical magic, and whirlwinds whispering. It is a language of the invisible domains of the indivisible oneness, of the octave shifts, of the dancing and ascending spiral of awakening consciousness, slowing it down into present moment time. Claritas, integritas, and consonatia, radiance, wholeness, and harmony the mantra of the oracle. I understand more deeply now your symbols of nature's heart. I'm grateful for your messages woven into the essence of our souls. The soul of the earth, the soul of the moon, the soul of the sun, the soul of all suns, and the soul of all space and time, no space and time, the soul of the universe, the soul of all universes, as it embraces us with equanimity and love. That's the language of the symbols. It always leads you back to connectivity. And we're really excited that connectivity has taken such a big thing now. Everybody is talking about it. You know, because they're realizing it's real and it affects you know, even the stock markets and things like that, which some people put a lot of attention on. And, and it's important to, to know our connectivity. It really is. So I have an equinox poem here. We're not quite at the equinox, but it will be passed by the time uh, we do this again. So, we say, here we are now, in this present moment, light and dark, dancing ever nearer to that balancing point, the original equanimity. Here now, all things being in their oneness, knowing that each precious present moment contains the finest balance between being and non-being. Bring your compassion, bring your joy, bring your love and bring your peace and anchor them in the awareness of this present moment and every present moment. And all present moments throughout all eternity. Feel the interdependence of your luminous being and embrace your joyful heart as it sings, heartbeat after heartbeat, always a gift from the original mind and nature's heart of hearts. Uh, well, you know, I, I I've got one here that, that was uh, really fun from last first Friday. And you have to explain a little bit about it. There's a story that goes with it. And, and it was uh, on NPR. It was a TED Talk and it was about death. And uh, this, this, this lady, uh, amazing woman, had this idea. And uh, she's been very successful with it. But she was very worried about what would happen, or what does happen, not what would happen, but what would happen to her, but what happens every time someone dies. Something has to be done with the body. And all of our bodies contain a lot of not nice things <laughs> that shouldn't be go back into the environment. So it's a quandary because if they burn you up, you go up into the air and it goes all over. They put you in the ground, it just is in the ground forever and ever. And say, so, what do we do? And her answer, some kind of enlightened state, mushrooms. Mushrooms. 
mushroom. So she looked into all this mycology and she found all these mushrooms that live on toxic waste and they convert it to organic material. So what did she do in her little enlightened state? She makes suits, mushroom suits, for people who have passed away. And you put on the suit and they lay you down and the mushrooms remove all your toxins and convert them and you've, you've fed all these lovely mushrooms. <laughs> So it's a way of, thought, it's a thought of continuity. Uh, anyway, she's been very successful and people are ordering her suits. Uh, as strange as that. I may, I'm probably going to order one myself, even though, uh, and have it in the closet there with all the spores waiting. <laughs> anyway, it, I wrote a poem about it. Uh, okay. Because it really inspired me, the poem did. <laughs> And the poem is, it's called The Mushroom Jacket. The bionome, 10 trillion beings, each alive, each aware, and each with intention. How amazing we all work together to manifest this miracle we call life. Me, I, or you. Listen to the song of your invisible friends. They have a message of the indivisible nature of our being. We are not separate. We are not alone. We are a community in harmony, manifesting this precious miracle gem of what we know, think, of what we feel, of what we desire. These are our lifelong friends. When we die, they return us with gratitude to the universal biome of life, and we thank them. <coughs> so I know it's a little macabre, but it's like we all have to think about death sometime and what happens and where we all go. And uh, the biome is, is is if we're not in tune with it, you know, that's when disease happens. So we're so lucky now that, this is part of the science part here, we're so lucky that we now can see all these invisible energies, life energies that are part of us. And we're not separate, we can't be separate. They've been here for billions of years, we've only been here for a few million. You know, give or take a few million, right? And so they have actually manifested us and are part of us and they live with us and they, outnumber our physical human cells 10 to 1. There's 10 times as many of them, if you count numbers, as cells in our body. So we, uh, we, we want to talk to them and be friends. That's what this poem is about, because when you're friendly with your biome, you're healthy. <laughs> and, they, and, and they're healthy too, and that's what keeps us healthy. And that's what we're discovering. Because it's really weird, they've discovered that it, it affects your, your, your mind, your emotions, your physicality. All these things are, are connected to these little guys that talk to us in, in their invisible language of converting proteins and sugars and molecules from one state into another. So think about your bionomes. It's okay, you can include them in your prayers. <laughs> They are intelligent, they're awake. They've done all these experiments and they show that these things are really, you know, they're not stupid. <laughs> Only humans become stupid. <laughs> it's one of our traits. <laughs> we also become very intelligent and smart and connect with the universe, which is what we're here for. But we have to live through the ones that haven't woken up yet and endure their, their manifestations that we have to live through. So one of the things that we always say as we close our, our program here is, is that because it is such a, a world in extreme balance that each of us have a responsibility uh, to share and that is to generate the happiness, the joy, the peace, the love, 
in yourself and share it with others because it is a substance that can be measured and goes out into the world. It knows no borders, it knows no boundaries. And it, I believe in my um, wild artistic madness that the, my thoughts and feelings like that really count along with everybody else's and they all connect together and they keep the world from completely going over the edge. <laughs> and so we wake up in the morning and we say, ah, good job. Let's do it again today. Let's spread peace and half and joy in life, sharing and caring with others and grow closer and make these bonds that are strong enough to keep the world from, uh, to turn it around hopefully in, in the end is what we're really our intentions are. But we realize it's a little bit like Sisyphus's uh, job of pushing that big stone up the hill. <laughs> so thank you all. Do the job of, uh, of being conscious and aware and, and, and making that energy go out because it really counts. And thank you for all being here. It's a pleasure to share with you every time. And, uh, And if you're from out of town, we are making these videos here, which we turn into uh, uh, videos that go onto YouTube, and you can access them from wherever you are. So, once again, it's a pleasure to have you here. Have a great night. <laughs>